Yeah. Before we get started, I have something I have to say. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you guys fans of Oasis? Or at least familiar with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. familiar. Yeah. So today a lady hit and run my car. Oh, and no. it was and it was because her and her boyfriend were arguing in the car and he stepped out and like started yelling and then she like put it in reverse and slammed into my car. It's not a big deal. But the only thing that I could think of right afterwards was that's why you don't back up in anger. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. Christ is risen. I'm your host, Andrew. And today I'm going to ask Father Turbo and Cyprian, who is your favorite character from The Simpsons? Because I know mine. Oh. Like tertiary or main, it doesn't really matter. But mine, without a doubt, is Seymour Skinner, Principal Skinner. He is like probably the funniest character on that show he's a great character he's a great character you know i like lisa man i like lisa, lisa? i like lisa as i get older i get more and more annoyed with lisa it's like there's a part where she's talking to mr burns and she's like they're just sitting there like waiting for something and she says something or he says like so you know, I can't remember. It's like, so do you like music? And she's like, well, when it's not like, you know, like put out by like executives, you know, that's like meant to oppress like creative talent. It's like, my gosh, are you always on? And it's just like, <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about Lisa. It's just like, chill out a little bit. I don't she's, know if that's she's a grounding, like, I see her as like the grounding influence of that show because the show is based on like sheer absurdity. And even though she is absurd, even though she's absurd, she's like the counterbalance. She's the counterbalance of the absurdity and sort of brings it because she's absurd on the other side of it. Yeah, right? that's like, true. She's 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 like too far, it, it, even like as that example. But you imagine All if she's not there, over yeah, and she's like pulling it down like a little if bit. If she's like, not there, it's the whole thing is just a mess. Oh yeah. So in some ways, she's like the weight holding down the balloon. You know? I can see that. Yeah, I can appreciate her role as that. I like. I, yeah, I would say. I would say she sticks out to me as like the most important character, maybe. Ever since Disney Plus came out, I've been kind of slowly working my way through like the whole show, like an episode a week or something like that. And I'm getting to the part. Well, where you know, like, you know, dude, it's then then you're never ever gonna get through the show. Oh, I know. It's it's one of those <laughs> like an episode a week. I'm doing it. It's like I'm like a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do if I caught one. Like I don't wouldn't know what to do right. if I finished The Simpsons. I would just right, be like, right. well, I guess I have to start over again. But Is uh, still going? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like what it's thirty like, years? Thirty years? Yeah, it's like that? far. It's like far and above the longest running show now, right? Oh yeah, I think so. Nothing, oh. nothing even touches it. Nothing's even close to it, right? Well, Saturday Night Live, right? Saturday Night Live's like yeah, that's longer. Oh, okay, it's like, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I bet you know maybe there's like longest consecutive animated show or something. I I will say this before I'm done. I'll get off of my soapbox after this. But actually, this last time I've re because I've been watching The Simpsons since I was a teenager or whatever. I've only recently learned to appreciate how absolutely hysterical Marge is. Like Marge is really really funny. And like in a way that she does not intend to be funny, but she's just mm. like, there's like a part uh, where they're talking and they're talking about music and they're all dancing and she's just sitting like with her hands in her lap and she's like, music is none of my business. And it's just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Cause that's who she is as a character through and through. Yeah. So who's your favorite brother? You know, I don't really know. I mean, Mr. Burns, maybe? 
He's good. He's a good. He's he's a clutch character. Yeah, on the show, he's very clutch. Very I would have. Like, sorry, Father. Go ahead. Maybe the Scottish dude. Groundskeeper oh, Willie. The groundskeeper Willie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah groundskeeper Willie's got some interesting stuff. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's it, all I got. I also like Mayor Quimby. He's really funny too. Um. Okay, so right off the bat, I think we're going to get going with the Creed again because I did go through uh, the comments and unless Cyprian got some questions straight to the email Dropbox, well, or, yeah, then that's fine. Um, if you guys really want, you can put them in and we can do them for next week. We'll see how many questions we get. I got a couple of them here, but we could probably go through them. There's probably maybe like 15, 20 minutes of material here. Um, okay. So, Father... Um, there is no meaning to our intro, uh, like song. Is there Cyprian? Like, not that I'm aware of. There's some the, like the song itself. Yeah, um, no, or the, no, or the it's intro, like the, imagery, itself. the imagery and stuff. Like um, that, going like that. And I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there is, I'm sure there is the, yeah. Well, you know, you have the right and the left, so people should see that. Right. So like okay. it's got you've got the two sides, the right and the left. I think that if and then for people to know, because a lot of people are like, what is the voice saying? So the voice is saying it's all covered in sin is what the voice is saying. Oh, really? That's what the voice <laughs> I is did saying. not know that. Yes. So if you so so what you're seeing is you're seeing the play of the left and the right. So obviously you've got the royal path. And then, of course, ending with the penitent person praying and you have the icon right so i think if people look at it as the juxtaposition of left and right and trying to follow the royal path i think they'll get the meaning yeah, I, I mean you have it. that you have the right on the right side you have the hand mm -hmm. holding the dove mm -hmm. right? and then you have the gun with the mm -hmm. with the blood you know um there's like a house plant in there somewhere yeah, though yeah, right it's a plant like for the greens because it's on the left yeah right uh, so the environmental and all of that yeah 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 you'll you'll get it if you look if you look and you see it that way that we're talking about the royal path and then walking through the desert and the things going on both sides flipping between right i think when you start to look at it that way you'll start to see what the meaning is people will okay get it. okay yeah. so try harder people <laughs> um so <laughs> What are the best spiritual? This is from Nikolai, a uh, former guest host of the show or guest mm -hmm. of the show. What are the best spiritual movies in which film of Christ, if any, Ooh, is the best? Man, good question. You're going to crack some knuckles, Father? Good question. Okay. <laughs> I, got, I got a couple, a couple in the queue. Some of them might surprise some people, but. Um, Definitely Magnolia is, I mean, Tom Magnolia, yeah, Magnolia is an in, incredible movie that really highlights the kind of like totality and scope of, of life from definitely like a spiritual perspective. Um, I mean, it gets pretty explicit, not just in, in the obvious terms of explicit, but like, in regards to the imagery, like a lot of people, you know, um, spoiler alert, at the end, um, in the midst of all of this kind of like captivity to sin, all these things that have been happening, broken relationships, irreparable things happening, this uh, plague of frogs hits, mm. hits mm. the world. You know what I mean? And it, it's, it is such a shock. You're like, what is happening? It's incredible. Um, Tom, <laughs> this, this is, this is one of those things where I was like, man, Tom Cruise, the scene in which his father is dying, this guy is the epitome of the passions, Tom Cruise character, epitome of the passions. This is a man who's absolutely despicable. Everything in his life is, you know, re repugnant. He's like, self-help guru for like pickup culture right just complete sleazeball and he is like again he, he is this 
you know, like passions incarnate, right? And it, it all stemming from this, you begin to see and it's inferred, it's, it's coming from this um, distorted, broken relationship with his father, which that in itself is a whole, you know, treaty. But the scene in which his father's dying and he hasn't been with his father so long, and I haven't seen this, I haven't seen this movie in over 20 years, right? So, I mean, it's, it's all, I've seen it once, I've seen mm -hmm. it once, I haven't seen it in 20 years, but it's still pretty vivid and like, the the scene in which he's breaking down as his father's dying and there's he has not been able to reconcile with him it is yeah it's it's yeah it's it's incredible so and there's just so much there i mean the 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 duplicity and hypocrisy of uh, I can't remember the actor's name, but he's like the child. He's like the child star host. He's like this, like America's dad. Everyone loves him, and then like the whole time he's been like molesting kids and um, hmm. doing all this, you know, you know, cheating on his wife, all this crazy stuff, and just it's it's incredible. It's incredible. But the problem is when people go like, "Oh, what's like the best spiritual movie?" I think sometimes they're asking for like the passion or religious, yeah like or, or, religious or you know movie. what i mean like they like what's the great cool. movie i can show the sunday school class like right i can give you some of those but like if you if you want a movie that really presents and articulates like the spiritual life in reality like like in in all of its horror and gristle um and danger like this is these are these are like why i'm picking certain things uh another one like my top two, Magnolia. Number two is Stalker by Tarkovsky. I don't think I've ever seen it. Man. I don't think I've ever seen it. Man. That Stalker is just like. I got I to gotta put that on the list. Yeah, Stalker's, Stalker's incredible. And I'll, I'll do you a solid, you know, not to be that guy. I'll do you a solid. A lot of people like with Tarkovsky films in general, people and maybe they are maybe i'm i guess i am that guy but um like stalker and rublev are incredible and i i don't really care what people say like someone will say like oh you have to like rublev no you don't i know plenty of people i know plenty of people who are orthodox i know plenty of clergy who can't stand that movie who they think it's mm. just a pretentious art movie that doesn't mean anything i respectfully disagree with them I'll give you a great example. There's there's an opening scene in Rublev where it's this horse just like rolling, like, like falling down, rolling and trying to get up. It's like struggling to get up. And the scene is in slow motion. And so you could watch it and just be like, okay, like what is it? But how else, like how else do you articulate in film contemplation hmm. right how else do you articulate in film contemplation in the sense of when you actually like those of you who, who know what i'm talking about you'll get it those moments when you're communing with god through nature those moments when you are contemplating you know the <laughs> forgive me for if i can go there but like the logo of, of what, a, of what something is like, you're seeing something happen and it isn't just like, Oh, it's a horse. It's like what he does there to really establish a pace and not just in the sense of like a film, but you know, like with prayer, there's a pace that you have to mm -hmm. kind of enter into. You have to slow mm -hmm. things down and you have to begin to really be present. Right. So he does that in a way with, with film, which is it's, it's very orthodox and it's very, it's very orthodox and especially in that sense of when you go like oh it's an orthodox movie people want the superficial like here's a big three bar cross and here's russians and here's incense and it's like okay but the spirituality of 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 the tradition like how do you how do you communicate that and both stalker and rublev do that in a lot of ways so anyways I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give kind of like a cheat for people because I think if I don't give them this, they'll be like, whatever. But if I tell you this now, I guarantee you for most people, especially with, with Stalker, it'll help them appreciate the film. 
just understand what that film is about. It's about explicitly and literally the spiritual life. Mm. And it's about the, the relationship between an individual, their spiritual father and God. When you, mm-hmm. when you understand that, mm-hmm. then that movie's like, it, it just, it blows your mind. It blows your mind. Pay attention to the guide and what he's got right there. He's got yeah. a little white piece right there. So yeah. like, there's that scene with like, he's got this handkerchief. And he's like, he's only throwing. go where I'm telling you yeah. and you have to go in the way I'm telling you. And it's just, and the, the people are like, this is so stupid and random, but it's like, no, no this is, this is, this, these are obediences. These, this is a prayer rule. This is like guidance. This mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm, it's, right. it's great. It's great. Yeah. It's, I tell you the part of that movie that got me is no spoiler. It's not really a big deal, but when they get to the place mm-hmm. and the guys immediately like pulls out a pipe bomb, and he's like, I have to destroy it. Yep. And then he was just like, and they're all like, why? And he's like, because it can't be here. And it's just like, that's, that is, that's the part I got in the theater. And I was like that, I get that. I get what he's talking about right there. Like, that's exactly how I feel a lot of the times. So stalkers, this a good is, one. This is tied into it's, it's interesting. And I think notable that the first question and the second question are actually related to each other. Right? Well, the third like, one is too. Well, I, I think that there's a, and, and I mean, maybe if the third question deals with this too, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to skip over this because this, this stuck out to me and father, maybe if you want to comment <coughs> on this a bit, because I, I can't think of anyone who would be better on commenting on this, but just this notion that, um, or that orthodoxy is that orthodoxy is a, is a way of life and then a way of being that's going to then, you know, express itself in the things that you do and not just like, it's the church I go to. It's the thing that I do on Sunday, which is like, I think this, this, this idea of like, it's a religion or it's a denomination Mm -hmm. just for me when people will. Yeah. And some of these people are very, well-meaning and like good-hearted or whatever and they're just interested in my own journey people maybe that i've known in the past and they're like well why that denomination or why that like why eastern orthodox in particular and i'm like no 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 this is not like this is not like a denominational thing it's not like choosing a denomination this is this is i i was already i felt myself already pointed in a certain direction spiritually and then when I found orthodoxy, what I've told people is that like, I didn't have to give anything up because it just answered all of the, it filled in all the gaps, basically. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 for as terrible as it sounds, the only real way to answer it is, be, is very simply. All of that is because it's the truth. If you clearly. If, I mean, I mean, forgive me. I don't know what else to say. Like, like. That's maddening for people to hear too. They, yeah, they can't handle it. Like, like yeah. people, people cannot handle that. Mm-hmm. They cannot handle it. And it's just like. It's like it, when someone says, but this person over here is saying this thing. And you're like, yeah. well, the difference is, is I'm right. Yeah, I like, mean. The difference I mean, is, is like, and it's not, it's not because Andrew Funk is right. It's because Andrew's aligned himself with what is right. Right. right, right, or tried to. Right. I mean, what it's just so crazy for people because, and I'm trying to be charitable here. Like, it, it, it what an impossible statement. What do you mean it's the truth? Mm-hmm. But once, mm-hmm. once you have, once you've communed with him. <laughs> I mean, it, I, there's no, I don't even need to argue about it. It's like, I mean, it, yeah. Like, because it's the truth. Because mm-hmm. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. I, mean, it's like, I know that's super anticlimactic, but it's. It's like, I have it, nothing. I have nothing to prove to you. There's nothing. I don't have anything to prove to you. I mean, there's like, I don't have to like cite like historical that. data. Yes. Yes. It's that. Yes. It's that. But it's. I can't prove it to you. 
because it's something that goes beyond proving. Like it's, it's, we're talking about being Mm -hmm. like, this is, this is one of the reasons why a philosophical disposition in the sense of like academic philosophy and like, you know, all, all that stuff, like it really is pointless because it, it's, it's trying to, it's trying to approach, it, it's like we're getting into the whole like 2D, like, like, like 4D stuff. It's just, it's, it's a completely, it's so beyond the scope. And, and for some people, it sounds like this just sounds so fantastical what you're saying. It's like, I get it because it is, because for all of us, however far back you want to go, we would never think we'd be in this space now, right? We're so never, 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 you know what I mean? Never. And, you know, uh, it, it's incredible. I, I, like, honestly, I was at this wedding this weekend. This, yesterday was an incredible day. And I'm just, you know, I'm waiting for, for the enemy to attack now. Like, it was just incredible, like, incredible liturgy, this incredible wedding. And just the people, and, and I, was, I was speaking with some people at the table, and I was like, you know, like, I know it's just a tired trope. People are tired of hearing it, but it just it was like, I'm just, I'm like a guy from the streets, you know? I, I'm a, and I'm looking around and it's just the dignity and the honor and the beauty. And it's just like, it's like, forgive me for, I'm going to just, I'm cheesing people out tonight. I'm sorry. But it's like, every time I'm in the church and not just the temple, but just with the people of God. And it's, I'm in Rivendell. It's crazy. Sure. <laughs> Totally. I'm in Rivendell. It's crazy. Like, there's so much beauty and dignity and just, it, it's incredible. And you just, you just look around and like, is this real life? Are humans capable of such? And it's like, oh, this is what we were meant to be. Mm-hmm. And we're doing it poorly at that. And this is what we're meant to be. Like, when you have an experience like that, I'm telling you, Jack, it's, it's, it's not even a matter of like, well, blah, 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 you know, and that, that's all the more reason why some of these people are, are like, it's, it's maddening. Like some of these academics, like I was in a thread this morning and uh, a, a, a professor, which will name will remain unnamed from an, un, from an unnamed you know, Orthodox Theological Seminary, just talking a bunch of nonsense, just, just this nonsense. And I'm like, this poor man, you know, like, I guess his family is like Russian or whatever. I'm like, this poor man, it's like, people can become so jaded and disaffected. And it's just like, it's so sad because just the richness of God is, is you're missing the forest from the trees, man. And people they feel the need to, to jazz it up, to spice it up, to get controversial, to just say, and it's like, just relax, man. Don't, don't try to make your bones and try to say something controversial. Like, I don't know if you're looking for retweets. I, I don't know what you're doing, but like, that's not the experience of the church. And if me, a scumbag, can be experiencing this, like, how much more so someone who's, however many generations you, your family's been in, in the church, it's like, I don't know. I'm getting off this broken soapbox, forgive me. I, I could go on all night. It's, it's been incredible. But, so. but is there in some ways a, a, like, is it perhaps easier for us to appreciate the contrast of the encounter because of a lack of familiarity forever? Right. This is one of the things that I kind of, I mean, I I think about for my children Mm -hmm. and now, like, I didn't think about it when they were baptized because I wasn't even Orthodox to me. It was just like, well, my wife's Russian, they're Russian. She wants them baptized. So this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, doesn't hurt me. 
beautiful, you know, experience the, my, you know, with, with the first one. And then, so with the second one, I was like, yes, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like opportunity for like her community and people to be around and all of that, like, okay, fantastic. But now, you know, I wonder, it's interesting for me because I don't know if, I don't know for how many converts their, you know, their children have like a lineage, right? So for, for my wife, it's, she's just Orthodox, like to her bones, you know what I mean? Like it's, and it's so familiar at times. I know for her that it's like, I think sometimes she thinks that I'm maybe overdoing things, mm -hmm. right? Because maybe I'm not just living it in the same way that she, d d am I kind of making sense? Like, mm -hmm. and it's like, what, what, how do I wonder about that for my children? Like, how do I, how do I raise them outside of the, cause I'm like amazed by the encounter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm amazed by the encounter. And it's like, do, do you raise your children with that amazement or do, or is it better to raise your children with like, it's the, the, the simmering of orthodoxy, like is always there. I worry that if I'm like pointing things out too much, do you, do you understand kind of where I'm I going? Do, I do. Like, I mean, concern? I do. I do. It, it's hard because like I'm a convert, right? So it's like, of course I can speak from as my experience, but like at this point I've been in the church long enough and I've known enough people who are cradle and I, I've seen it. I've seen people, I know good people who are in the church, right? Who, yes, they love that they're Orthodox culturally, but they also love God. Cause let's just be real clear. Let's not get it twisted. There's plenty of people who are culturally Orthodox, but they don't got any real love for God. Mm -hmm. that, that's just that's a reality Any, anyone who's honest will tell you that like that's that's just a reality it's not a fault of the church that's not a fault of orthodoxy that's just you know what i mean it, it's that's a reality right um why do you think the i mean <laughs> what's the whole old testament pointing to the new testament about right like in the the gentiles <laughs> being brought in right <laughs> because the jews right it's just in it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's the same thing, right? So us converts in many ways, you could look at us as like the new Gentiles. It's the same thing, right? The same spiritual principles apply, however you want to look at it, right? So that that's reality. And, and I just think that, um, and again, we're all path, right? So there's, there's a balance there because most converts can really that's why I'm so big on trying to teach people about you're a guest, we're guests, like, and like, this is our home now, yes, but like, let's not forget, like, we've been grafted in, right, and we need to be, you know, respectful of that, right, um, and we, we can never denigrate, you know, those who, who preserve the faith and, 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 and made a place at the table for us. We can never denigrate them and we should never do that you know like i can't stand that whole like uh just the cradle convert dichotomy when people push it too far i can't stand it because it's just you know but at the same token anyone will tell you if you you know if you if you <laughs> if you catch up with them you know behind closed doors it'd be like yeah you know like there's plenty of people uh, i got i have a really good friend he's great priest, good man. Uh, he's Russian. And uh, I was in his parish, this is many years ago. It's like seven years ago, uh, longer, no, 10 years ago, maybe. Yeah, like 10, man, maybe 10 plus. Anyways, point being, it was a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I just watched him and, and he's not that guy. He's not that guy. But he was telling his people, he's like, you know, we're really good at being orthodox, you know, really good at, and people hear me out. He's like, we're really good at being orthodox, really good, you know, but what are we Christians, you know? Mm. And and someone goes like, oh, that's a bunch of liberal trash and like, that's just blah, blah, blah. But like, not the way in which he meant it. Cause like, yeah, being orthodox does mean being Christian, but what we're talking about is um, 
when people can divorce the traditions from the experience of love of God, right? To when that's just that's just the truth, right? And it can happen with anything, and any, <laughs> right? It can happen with anything and anyone. It's not about orthodox; it's about a human problem. So I think I think I think that's the key, right? Because we're talking about just part of our fallen, broken condition, you know. And or orthodoxy is perfect. The church is perfect and good, right? It's when we stray from that perfection, when we get off that real path, that things go go awry. And cradles can do it, converts can do it because we're both humans, right? And we can both take God for granted or we can take the tradition for granted. We can take our families for granted. We can take our health for granted. We, we take all kinds of things for granted, you know? So I think the biggest thing, honestly, is, and gosh, I'm so, I'm like a big cheese ball tonight, but just being loving, like, because it's, it's, it's easier said than done to be loving, to, to love the people you're with, to love God, to truly love God, you know, and, and to not treat God like, like Zeus, you know, to truly love God. You know? I think, uh, uh, as a convert, I think it's, it's a little bit that one of the challenges, um, especially in America, is there's this dichotomy given where there's two examples is you can be rigorous in your traditions or you can just be loving. You know, that's that's one of the problems with, I guess, you know, more or less like the the wokiness, quote unquote, is like, oh, we don't need any of that stuff to be loving. We just love people. You know, there's they nothing don't even wrong. know what love is, though. Well, of course. And that's yeah, that's it's just a word. It's well, we can or it's a tool. It's a bludgeon, actually. It's, it's a, a weapon. The word is a weapon. The word love for them is a weapon. 100 percent. That's a whole different thing. Like that is like love for them is it's not it's it's entirely like you could see in their eyes a little bit that it's just like it's self-gratifying love. I, it's like, I, I love because I'm so good. Like, I, I'm sure that there's a better spiritual way to put that, but it's so it's, it's virtue signaling, but it's also like a step further beyond that. Cause it's like, well, whatever, or you can be stuck in your rigidness, like your, your like tradition. So it, as like, as an American, I have found in my spiritual walk, I vast, like I swing wildly back and forth between those two for the first couple of years. It's like, well, which is it, you know, am I like, am I casting off quote unquote, the shackles of ritual and tradition to just make love simple? Or do I go, you know, over to the other side? And I think because in America, that's kind of a little bit how it's presented because, you know, we're so spiritually weak and immature that we think that those two worlds can't be married. And of course they are. But I mean, of course, they're perfectly married. Mm -hmm. And my love is often <clears throat> uh, out of order when I'm not following the traditions, when I'm not, when I'm not, when I'm not loving in a godly way. So, yeah, yeah that's a great, that's a really great point, because I, I think there's some things that we as Americans have an assumption towards, we as Westerners have an assumption towards. And when we make the assumption, it can be way more dangerous. But when someone from an Orthodox country makes, the, makes that assumption, it's actually a safer bet. And that's this. People assume that they're, they have a good heart. This, this is the number, number this mm. is one of like the top things I have to deal with with people. They assume that they're a good person. <laughs> they assume that they have a good heart. They assume that they have a good conscience. They assume all those things. And it, it's tough because I'm learning more and more um, to really let God, you know, drive, drive the car and everything, but especially in that one, because you try to show people that like, actually, no, you're, you're self-serving, you're, you're, you're egotistical, you're vain. Like you start showing people this and they, you know, don't want to crucify you, right? Yeah. So, uh, the thing about it is, is that people don't understand that you aren't born with a good conscience. It has to be formed. Mm -hmm. 
People don't people don't know this, right? They just assume, no, I'm a good person, whatever. I, I've never raped anyone. I've never killed anyone. I've never, you know what I mean? And so they just assume, well, I'm a good person. But it's like, no, like no one is. But on top of that, your culture is corrupt. Your culture is bankrupt spiritually and morally, especially if you're living now. You know what I mean? <laughs> especially if you're living now. Anyone who can hear my voice and you're in the <laughs> land of the living, you're living in a big <coughs> right? But people who are coming from an orthodox culture, it's not a slam dunk for them either, but there's a greater, um, there's, there's a framework that's built in in a different way, which is, a, you know, I'm, I'm biased, I'm biased, but especially those who are coming from a kind of more Slavic tradition, like, there, there's a kind of suffering that's baked in there. And there's there's a hardness of life that's baked in there um, that allows certain things to not be as saccharine, like beauty. Beauty in beauty for us can be so easily can become saccharine and just like, ugh, right? It's not even beauty, it's like whatever. Uh, Whereas, father, what's um, saccharine? Like ultra like ultra bad super faux chemical sweet like okay. just right just take it over the limit yeah take it over the limit like here let's let's open 20 packs of splenda and just pour it in your mouth right mm -hmm. um like a traditional quote-unquote orthodox culture has a framework built in now you can go places, right? It's like, hey, uh, Russia has a crazy high abortion rate. You know what I mean? Uh, Greece has all kinds of crazy stuff like pop. So like, I understand all of that, right? You can get, especially after the fall of, of um, the Soviet Union, people finally kind of being able to slowly open up and become baptized more like, so many people were baptized, were not catechized, had no idea. That, that, that's a reality too. It's just like, it's almost like superstition. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's all there. But the thing is, the grace of God still works. You know what I'm saying? And, and more importantly, all of those things. Here's another thing people don't think about. How old is our country? Right. Two, 250 years? 250? Yeah, so almost, 50? yeah, 50? basically. Right, I mean, there's like apartment buildings <laughs> in Europe older than our country. We're not even talking about like ruins or anything like that. We're talking like, a, you know what I mean? We're, we're talking about- People are living in them. People, people are living, are living in, in apartments yes. older yeah, yeah, than our yeah, country. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm people sorry. People in Europe have I'm, underwear older than our country. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but that that means something. And part of our political milieu here in the States is, is we are so retarded. I'm not even saying that in a kind of like, uh, in the sense of slang, but in a more like a clinical sense, literal sense, we're retarded. You know, we're, we're underdeveloped. And, and what exacerbates that is our hubris, right? We, we think that we're so smart or this and that. And we, I'll never, I mean, I'll never forget. I'm in, uh, I'm in the airport, you know, uh, just, just my whole time in Kosovo, my whole time in, in Sarajevo, my whole time there, it was just like, I've never felt so dumb, so ignorant, so just unworthy of any, I mean, it, I'd never been so aware, I, I wasn't aware of how even now, just hearing my voice talk right now, I'm still a stupid, loud, ignorant buffoon. Mostly because I'm an American who thinks I, I know yeah, something. Right. We're Americans. That's what we do. You know what I mean? And so, and I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm not like, oh, poo poo America. Like, yeah, you know, great. Pass me some beer. Give me a gun. We'll sit on the porch. I'm, I'm cool. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's all good. I'm just saying that when... Like I had clients, I, I had clients when I was tattooing who they went off to Iraq, 
right? And they came back, I'm thinking about one brother in particular, he's all messed up, right? Not necessarily because that, yeah, he killed people. I'm not trying to like play that down. All this stuff happened. Yeah, he saw some carnage, but you know what a big part of it is? He comes, he left a boy talking about, you know, whatever. And he comes back and he can't relate to any of his friends. Why? Because he became a man. And not even just because he went off to war and like saw friends kill or kill people. But what happens when you leave the States is you begin to realize in a way that, that it's not reciprocal. Like people leave their countries and come here and get dumbed down. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where they become jaded. We leave here, go somewhere else. And we're like, whoa, because we think the world revolves around us. If, if you're following what I'm saying and not being able to talk with your peers because it's like, you just matured like 15 years and you come back, it's like everyone's still a boy talking about stupid stuff. When I, I remember, again, both my time coming back from, from the Balkans and my time coming back from Iraq, it's like, I can't talk to anybody because like the average 60, at that time, the average like 20 year old person, 18 year old person, 70 year old person in Europe, you could talk to them to some degree about politics or something else, you know what I mean? And, and they would have some sort of reasonable opinion. You could dialogue with them here. We're so ignorant. And it, some of that's gotten a little bit better because of the proliferation of, of information through like the internet and like stuff like that. But even then, people don't have analysis. They just have regurgitation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all of this sounds like I'm on a tangent, but it's not because it does play into people's experience of spirituality, right? Because like I was talking about this with someone the other day, a couple weeks ago, actually. There we, we had a guy visit the parish. He's Russian, odd duck, you know, whatever. But me and, and me and one of the other brothers are sitting there talking with them. And he's just talking. He's just like, you know, going on. And it's super just normal. He's talking about like, like all these people died. And it wasn't, he was like, oh, I have all these people died. It was, it was in the context of something else we were talking about. And it was totally normal. It was like him bringing up these people dying wasn't him like looking for attention. He wasn't like, I'm a, I'm a you know, I'm a tough guy. It was, it was just, you had to be there, but it was very normal in the context in which he brought it up. And we were done talking and then me and my brother here were talking about stuff. And he's just like, yeah, it's crazy how few Americans have had any access to death. Like so many Americans, like- It's hidden, it's hidden here for sure. So many people have like, have no access to death. I know so many people who, yeah, they've had a grandma die maybe. You know what I mean? Um, but siblings, you know, like a parent, you know? Um, and that's why for me, um, especially for like those who have had siblings or parents die and you're under 50, you know, I feel like those people, and some of you know who you are, right? <laughs> like, I feel like, I feel like I'm able to really relate and connect with them on that level because it, it does something to you, right? But here's what. It, but here's another way to put it: it's actually the normal, the normal experience for human beings. Like what we're doing here in regards of nobody dies, and when they do die, we ship them off to this really nice place where we'll never see them again, and then they come back and they're made up to not look like they're dead. You know what I mean? All of that they is come so back at all. Yeah. If they come back at all. If they come back at all. There's a there's a book out there, guys. I'm gonna some for those of you who are listening, there's a book called uh, For the Life of the World by Father Alexander Schmemann. It's a it's a great book. I'm I'm not a super like I'm not a Schmemannite guy, but it's like he's one of those that book is one of those books that you should read, you know? And like even if you just read the first 11 pages of that book, it'll blow you away. But Towards the end, there's this great chapter you talked about death and like how death is just partitioned off in this in this society here. And it's, excuse me, it's super true. And it retards 
people's spirituality. It just, it flat out does, right? So for instance, like Calvinist distortion, right? This kind of like Calvinist understanding of like having material wealth is a sign of God's favor. Well, that type of twisted, distorted doctrine or heresy, however you want to look at it, that lie basically, it's like a Petri dish and it for bacteria just to like explode in, right? Because the that saccharine environment that everyone's living in spiritually in this country allows for that type of nonsense to make sense, right? So I, I think the reality of someone like your wife, Cyprian, yeah, you know, she came into the church in that post-Soviet era. She came to that church where like people weren't getting catechized and it's just kind of like, in the air, it's in the blood. And so it's both valid at, on one hand and also not enough, right? Because I, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you get her, you know, behind closed doors, you know, she doesn't want to, you know, make your head too big, whatever. But I'm sure she'll say that your love of the faith is also inspiring her to some degree. You know what I mean? No, we've talked about it. We've definitely talked about, about that. And that is the case. I think if I wasn't like, she's going to do the things, right? Like she's going to do the things, but it's very different for, I mean, just even like, you know, what happened with Holy week and all of that, it's like, she wouldn't have necessarily done that. Right. And like, she wasn't keeping the fast, but I keep the fast. And so then it's like, now she started little by by little and she's like oh i'm actually in better shape when i'm keeping the fast you know what i mean and it's like so that's good too like it's physically it's good so it's like okay good so then she's like okay so i'm fasting today you know so like i th i think i think yeah there's that yeah there's the there's the there's the influence there and it, and i wonder if it's like if that re if that renewal of always needing to have new Gentiles, as as you said, like the, the the new Gentiles always needing to come into the faith is sort of like it's a feature of the faith almost mm -hmm. from the beginning, you know. And at no. one time the Russians were the Gentiles. That's right. <laughs> you know, a thousand That's years right. ago the Russians were the Gentiles. That's right. That's right. That's so right. well, this this thing that you brought up, Father, it really hit me. This. Um, this idea of not having a framework for what is a good person mm -hmm. and for saying like, I'm a good person. I've got a good heart. You bringing that up is, well, it's not surprising, but it's something that over, let's say maybe the last, the last, certainly through Lent um, and then through Pascha and through Bright Week, like it's something that for some reason has been, you know, one of these thoughts that keeps coming into my head i guess it's maybe it's part of my repentance i don't know but you know for, so for for so long in my life i was telling myself and others were telling me and i think maybe it's because relative to the people that i was around and the world that i was in i was telling myself what a good person i was and people around me were telling me what a good person i was how i was helping people how i was kind to people how i was generous with people and yet and yet when I pray prayers for the living and the dead and I, and, and, and ask that, that, you know, that the people that I led away, that they not be condemned because of me, that the people that I, that's what I think is, I, I always think like, oh, I spent my whole life leading all these people away from God. And the whole time I was saying, oh, oh but I'm such a good person. Mm -hmm. Right. And even as I compared myself to, let's say the people who were, let's say, protestant as you say like calvinist leaning to the right who might have some problems with the things that i was doing yeah. i was the one who was like no 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 but you're not acting out of love i'm acting out of love look at how much i love everyone hmm. right but now i look and i see like no dude <laughs> like you very like a pied piper like very kindly and with a smile led people astray mm -hmm. and it's something that i've been struggling with but when you say you know 
that we lack a framework for what even a good person is. It's so true, Mm -hmm. you know, that like, whether it was, and I thought morally, ethically, I'm like, like you say, I'm not stealing from anybody. I'm being honest. I've never cheated anybody on a contract. I'm not robbing anybody. I'm not raping anybody. I'm not assaulting anybody. I'm a peaceful, good, like person. And yet, like I, I have an in, intense amount of shame for with that view in mind, how much I led people astray. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder even what that framework like looks like right now. And I mean, well, I'm Andrew, so I'm going to always pull it back to this, but <laughs> it really does <clears throat> because like going back to one of our first episodes, it really, <clears throat> I'm going to try and say this in a way that I'm not leading any, we're not going to like Andrew land, but it really is the difference between Tony Stark and Steve Rogers. Because I mean, like you have Tony Stark who is in civil war perpetuating a type of evil, but like, he's still a good person, you know, like he's not murdering anyone yet. Like he's not responsible for anyone's death yet at the beginning of it anyway. And I honestly think if you ask some people, like, who's the good guy in that story, I think you kind of get like a little bit of who, who, number one, who that person is and kind of what they're leaning towards, like in their spiritual life a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And two, like, I'm guessing that answer has probably changed drastically within the last couple of years, because like, um, You know, you can't really define what makes Cap good in this situation because, yeah, he does perpetuate violence as well. Like, but he's doing it in the name of something that's to a higher calling, blah, blah, blah. If you guys want more on that, you can read my blog. But it's like, really, it comes down to like, who are they emulating? Like, who is who emulating? And if one is emulating Christ to a degree, you know, and it's not a one for one. It's not perfect, but one is emulating Christ. And the other is per- like emulating tyranny. And I- I'm guessing that that has not only changed in the last couple of years of who people think is the good guy in that story, but also like, is Tony Stark, like, you know, a uh, archetype of like the good person that we want now? Like, is he the person that we want in charge? Is he good oh. though? Is he oh. good or is he just like, is his redemption possible? Not, is that what not, we see? Like, is he so, bad, but he could be redeemed? He's so not killing people. He's not raping people. That's kind of what I'm saying. Is but, but, but here's the thing, though. I mean, this is this is actually, to me, this kind of proves a point because it pulls you out of civil war, but, like, you get to end game, right? And they did this whole full arc where he actually begins to embody the thing that made Cap good in Civil War, which is there's a sacrificial aspect of something bigger than himself. 100%. And 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 I was- That like that to me proves your point actually, Andrew, I think maybe because because it gets, they, they are trying to explicitly point to like, they basically had to take, they basically took Tony Stark, Iron Man, which is this kind of, Yeah, he he has this almost uh, mm, it's on the tip of my tongue. His archetype, um, it's on the tip of my tongue. But whatever it is, it'll come to me at two o'clock in the morning. I'll scream it out. <laughs> but they really kind of gave some broader quote unquote Christ-like strokes there um, towards the end in regards to this kind of like big sacrificial like moment and movement, you know what I mean? Um, and, and I gotta say, you know, it was built up in the right way because even getting into this whole thing with like um, Ultron and creating Ultron and like, and even how explicitly like Ultron was this weird blasphemous like character, you know what I mean? And, 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 and weaving 
this kind of sacrificial aspect into into his character it does it does say something you know what i mean but but it's interesting to me because our society can't even like we're so broken we're so broken and fallen and and and, and impure and polluted we have to have god forgive me for saying it this way but we have to have like we can't take the Christ, we can't take the Christ um, arc or story archetype, forgive me for putting it this way, without having it being marred in some way. It's too much for us. Mm. Do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. It, it, it's, too, it's too much for us. I, and here's kind of what I mean. I'm going to use a phrase to prove the point. Uncle Tom. <laughs> Right. So most people don't even know like what that means. Right. But like the reason why I bring that up is Uncle Tom is this extremely pejorative term that's used and it's it's used to actually call out and and shame and identify and, and degrade, you know, a, a black person or a black man who's supposedly, you know, collaborating, collaborating or a traitor or whatever. Sure. But what's so funny is Uncle Tom is an incredibly pure Christ-like figure. If you've actually read the book, right? Huh. He, he's a Christ. Yeah, Uncle, Th Uncle Tom's cabin. Yeah. 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 He is Christ-like. Yeah. He's a, he's, he is like one of the most purest Christ-like figures in, you know, that kind of like post-Victorian, you know, literature, but we're so marred and, and just twisted we have to like have dirt on it. We can't handle, we, we don't even have the, we don't have the framework. We don't have the ability to see these characters. We don't, we don't, because we're so twisted as a people, right? We're so twisted. We need to have someone as, and, and we can be all like, oh, because he's like us, we're grimy, like, okay, fine, whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is like, I, I'll tell you, you know why I hated Captain America so much for so long? It was because I was so wicked and evil. I couldn't handle. That's why couldn't most handle. people do hate Cap most villains. That's actually like the primary reason why a villain doesn't like Captain America. There's no way that someone that good can be like exist. <laughs> so yeah. sorry, Father. No, forgive me. I mean, I mean, it's why I hated him for so long. You know what I mean? Because I was just so twisted and wicked. I mean, that's a whole thing. No one cares, but like I have a long history with 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 the gargoyle with the golem and with the, you know, with the anti-hero. And it's just like, it's, it's a part of me. It is what it is. But I, 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 at least at the very least, if nothing else, I can recognize now that it isn't a matter of, yes, some things objectively can be like cheesy or whatever, but really it's me. I'm the one that can't handle the purity of, of, of an actual authentic hero and any hero that's authentic is, an, is a reflection, an echo of Christ, right? Christ is the hero. You know what I mean? If you're, if you're following what I'm saying? Yeah. No, 100%. No, I mean, I don't want to get too into this because then I'm in the weeds. But I mean, I think that's why a lot of people do not like Superman. I think a lot of people do not like Superman because he's good. And they say, oh, he's boring. It's like, are you kidding me? He's not boring. He's incredibly interesting. When Superman shows up, everything's going to be okay. Like it's going to be okay. You know, like from there's like the animated movie, the death of Superman. There's like this little kid who drops his game boy and you know, like a rock is falling. This is like moments before Superman dies. And like, <clears throat> like you, for us who've read the comics, we know he's about to die and he stops and he flies over to the bridge to stop the rock from smashing the kid and then the mom's looking and sees the rock land and she's like oh my gosh but then the smoke clears and there's you know superman holding the rock and he stops and picks up the game boy and hands it to the boy or the game boy and hands it to the kid throws the rock and smiles that it's going to be okay son then flies back to the like to go fight doomsday and she's like how is that not the most interesting character like he's he's not the most interesting character but he's the character that's like it's good he's so good it's it like i don't know he shows up and he's got the twinkling in his eye and the smile and you know yeah, he, i mean oh, it, it's good. funny 
because this gets us into this whole thing. I remember for me, this is one of those moments when I started like theology started becoming not just head knowledge for me, but it actually began to change my perspective. And one of the first things that happened to me is I started being pulled out of cynicism. I started being pulling, I started to get slowly get pull, getting pulled out of being jaded, right? And this idea where I was like, oh, Yig and Yang's total like garbage. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's total garbage because there is light without darkness. Christ eats yin and yang for breakfast. There, right? There, there, there is a light without shadow of turning. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, so these are these are some pretty. All, all this stuff begins to 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 not just be the kind of like bouncing back and forth of ideas in, in your head, but it begins to actually affect your heart. It begins to actually affect it. And I gotta say, if you're really trying to live a Christian life meaning you're trying to be a good wife, be a good husband, be a good father, be a good mother, be a good sister, be a good brother, just be, be a good person, which means you have to be in relation to someone, right? You have to be in relation, you have to be in love with someone in relation to them. You can't leapfrog this because cynicism and all these things, which we are all swimming in, it's the kind of poison we've all been, you know, the church begins to wean you off of it. And when you, and it's, and it's a kind of a painful experience for a lot of us, right? Because our whole identity, so many people, so many of our identities are, are forged on this kind of like quippy, snipey, uh, you know, personality that we've caught little glimpses of through TV and through media and through, you know what I mean? the cynicism and it, it's terrible and like we 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 learn to do whatever but like and and here's the thing i'm not talking about um i'm i'm not talking about everyone needs to be walking around like whatever a big old cheese ball all the yeah time. like beaver cleaver like don't don't get it twisted what i'm saying right because i think we talked about this a couple episodes ago like I'm all about the guy who people just think is a complete curmudgeon, right? And he's just got a heart of gold. Like, we're not talking about the external, right? But it's this thing of, it, <laughs> it's philotimo. It, it's this, it's this love of honor that is expressed through the love of other it's it's yeah you know it, <laughs> it, it it's it's being it's being like christ you know like have i been with you so long that you don't even know like you know have i been with you so long peter like whatever you know like our lord you know he'll cut it up with someone a little bit like so it's not talking about just being like oh hi it, it's not that at all it's it's so much deeper right but it's definitely not being cynical, you know? Christ was never cynical. Christ was never cynical, right? Christ had hard words, you know? Christ was never cynical. It's okay, okay. To, it's okay to have hope. It's okay to have hope. It's cool to have hope sometimes. It's cool to be like, you know what? That's not cool. Yeah. You don't do that. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's the, there's like a there's such a huge danger in that cynicism. I'm thinking about it from the standpoint of I mean like the industry that I'm in, right? Like dealing with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. A lot of people have had it, a lot of people have had issues. You, you just actually put words to to something and helps me to to better frame it. Like a lot of people have had issues with me or thought certain things about the things that I'm doing or whatnot. And a lot of it when I dig in has been because there's so much because there is so much like fraud and shilling and shysters and all of and greed and like because the passions are like so involved in the things that people are doing 
that the assumption is that it's like there's no room for righteousness and it's almost like there's not you can't even you couldn't do anything right you couldn't behave in a in a way where you weren't actively it's it's hard for them to imagine that somebody wouldn't be participating in the space or participate living their life in a way that was not trying to prey on others in a way right mm -hmm. so it's like i had a recent conversation just with my neighbor the first time that i had met him and he's you know talking about he's playing around in the cryptocurrency and doing nfts and all of this and it's interesting because i've had this conversation so many times where i would be like you know talking to, i'll talk to these people because i don't do any of those things right like i'm not motivated by like uh the number is going to go up and all of this like i'm and i never have been and it's like it's shocking to sit and have a conversation with somebody and be like yeah but that's not really like that's kind of a scam like here's how it even works here's the mechanics of the whole thing like and to have somebody say back to you like oh no i know it's a scam but i understand that like the first group of people are going to make a whole bunch of money and then like the there will be another group of people left holding the bag and i'm just trying to be within this first group of people like i know it's a scam mm -hmm. like but everybody knows it's a scam and it's just kind of like a race of musical chairs in a way and i'm just like because the the what and what we it gets to like the cynicism in there is like there's no way to it's almost like there's no way to participate in the world and to have any success, whatever they view as success in the world, if you're not trying to get over on somebody. Hmm. And people are trying to get over on me, so I need to be getting over on them. And I think that this goes to the, the difference with like, this is the Tony Stark, Captain America difference right hmm. there, right? Is that Tony Stark is like, but if I don't do it to them, they're going to do it to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas Captain America is like, no, we just move forward with like the correct action mm -hmm. that needs to be and if and if we sacrifice ourselves in the process then so be it like but we're just going to move forward in the correct direction and that's because that's the only thing to do and it's just what i see over and over and it just magnifies it because it's in like i'm in this space and i also realize and the other thing that people will say to me is they'll say things like oh you build these things like you should just be building one of these and then they say whatever the latest scam is they're like, well, you could build that. Why aren't you? I don't understand. You could make a million dollars doing that. And I'm like, that million dollars would be like me knowingly knowing that I was scamming somebody. 100%. Like me knowingly knowing that I was lying and doing all of these things and that people would end up losing because of me and that I would be taking from them knowingly. But they're like, ah, oh, but it's a million dollars. Like everybody knows it's a scam. Like those, you're just scamming, scam, and it's... This is the cynicism, right. right? This is, it's so crazy pervasive. It's scary. It's scary how pervasive it is that it's like, yeah, but it's, it's worth it because then somehow I'll be safe if I like do these things, you know, mm -hmm. like this, this neighbor of mine in particular, he's like, I'm just trying to make X amount of dollars so that I could like take care of my kids or whatever, like give them like more and do these things for them. And I'm like, but what, but who do you, yeah, you yeah, like, I who agree. are you becoming? Like, what are you giving to them by living your life? Yeah. This is crazy to hear. You know what's crazy? I mean, I'm so thankful for my, uh, John Paul Qualls, may God grant him the kingdom, man. My dad, I'm so thankful for him because my dad was a real person. He was a fallen man who just was, he lived that life, you know? And I had the benefit of, being with him and watching him at the end of his life, which I'm part of that end of his life. I'm part of that transformation of being selfish and, and, and caring nothing about money and pleasure and all these things. Right. And I watched, you know, people know my story at this point, probably, but like I watched my dad cause you know, yeah, it's my mom. She got sick, but like, it happens to my dad like, losing everything, like everything having everything, losing everything. And, you know, like my dad tells me, you know, he's like, you know, just a few months before he dies, he's like, don't, don't do what I did. Don't chase the money, you know, don't chase the money. And 
man, I like took that to heart. And it's real because the thing is, is the person is like, it, not only, not like, <laughs> not only what is a profit of man to gain the world, but lose his soul, but you can actually lose it too. You can lose that materials. You can lose the material wealth. You can lose your health like nothing. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's the thing that a lot of people are aware of, but they don't have the framework to, to act upon that. Like, if you take that guy like, hey, blah, 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 like, yeah, I know it's not, but I still got to make it happen, man. I still got to do whatever. It's like, he does, they don't have the framework to act that out. And, and because they don't have, forgive me how this sounds, they don't have Christ. Mm-hmm. Like they, they don't have the awareness of, of, they don't have the truth, getting, getting us back to full circle, right? Uh, they don't have the means and have the framework to see. And, and, and that's, that's the thing that I think when you, when you encounter someone um, who is so jaded or you encounter someone who is so cynical or you encounter someone who is so kind of entrenched and immersed in these, these mindsets, it's like your heart, like at least now my heart really breaks for them. You know what I mean? Because exactly. Yeah. I like, mean, my uh, encounter with my neighbor, when he's saying these things, that's exactly the feeling that I was having it was just like extreme sorrow. As I looked at this man, and it judge, I'm a good judge of character. And I was like, this is actually like, this is actually a good guy. Mm-hmm. Like the things that he had done in this neighborhood, like of his own two hands and set, like clearing out the jungle and making this like beautiful place for the kids to play. And it's just like all there. And even when I met him, he was out just like about to go just clear stuff. And he was like, this, yeah, this is. And then to hear fr- from somebody where I'm like, Oh, you, 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 you so can be redeemed. And yet like, here's the cynicism, like just polluting you, Mm -hmm. you know, that's tough. Not to brag, but people tell me fairly frequently, I could probably make a fair amount of money off of my kids because they're pretty cute. Like they're pretty cute. We could probably stick them on YouTube or whatever. I don't even know. Just today, my wife was Mm -hmm. at the library and some guy was talking about my son He's like, you stick that guy, you get him modeling, like get him modeling and get him on YouTube and you guys will start making money. And I don't know if that's true That's or the not. same cynicism. But I that's think that's I'm, the same cynicism though. That's what I'm saying. And it's like, but at what cost? Huge cost. Like, what would this do to my kid? Like St. John Chrysostom says it's better for a woman to become a um, lady of the evening than to become an actor. Like it's Ooh. better for her to, to like have Agreed. that happen. Agreed. Um, I don't know the whole passage, but um, I'm sure he justifies it in the St. John Chrysostom way. And I agree. I didn't even have to know. I'm just like, yep. St. John Chrysostom says it within reason. I absolutely agree with it. And I, you know, it's like, sure, we can make whatever, what best case scenario, like $200,000. Let's say, okay, yeah, we, he gets signed to some contract. He, we never even have to leave the city we're leaving in. He just gets shot at some independent studio and they get shipped off to wherever. And he becomes the a, one of those mini babies on like Pampers boxes or whatever. But it's like, at what cost? Like, you know, and then like, what does that do to my wife and I? And it's just like, I'm... All you got to do, all you got to do to protect against that, get yourself a pocket photo of Corey Feldman just carrying that (laughs) I mean it's never Uh, turned out well that's the interesting part about all of this is that people will and again there's the cynicism is that people will be like no we're gonna do this with our with our kids and then you look and you're like no child's former child star that phrase yeah it's a thing yeah like It's not, it's never good. Like you're describing something that's, you're describing tragedy. When you say former child star or former child actor, there's going to be something tragic that comes after you say that phrase. And yet here you are like, yeah, but, but the money though. Yeah. 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 The money. Yeah, that's that's what yeah, that's what it is. One hundred percent. It's a child sacrifice. That's exactly yep. what it is. Offerings the molek. 
Yeah. And, and, and I think that that, but even in, but look, child sacrifice of that kind is cynicism in and of itself Mm -hmm. because you're saying, ah, you know, but what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like we did the sacrifice before. Yeah. Something good happened, whatever. So here we're going to do this, or maybe something didn't, we didn't do it enough, you know, as opposed to no, like there's like that, that actual love, the feeling that you actually have, like, no, let's just live in love and see what happens. Right. Let's, let's see, like, maybe we, maybe we need to deal with the suffering. Maybe this is something that needs to happen to us. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll be transformed by that, right? But the cynicism is like, nah. There's no nah. point. No point. Why do it? Why go through it? Why suffer? Well, I mean, especially why suffer when you cannot? I mean, it's like the ending of Brave New World. He's like, you're choosing pain. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I am. You know, it's just like, you, you know, and I've done the whole, like, within reason, you know, like, I've done the whole, like, pleasure island and even in like even within orthodoxy you know like it's like i've tried orthodoxy without suffering like i've tried like living a life where it's just like okay you just you know and you know even with like and the good thing about having hope i guess in the sense that i'm talking about of like an opposition of cynicism is is that it's not as narrow as people think it is there are times where i am still depressed i still struggle i still you know i'm not like i didn't like you know if the intro stays that we talked about i didn't come out and saw that somebody had smashed had smashed into my car and said oh good like i'm so happy that happened to me i guess i didn't really need that car that part of my car anymore like i guess like it's okay to not have like a headlight now it was like okay all right yep that sucks but we're gonna keep going like you know this isn't the end of the world this isn't like you know and this isn't further proof that all human beings are vile idiots because this lady drove off and didn't even leave her insurance or anything like that or it's not further proof that oh it's just scum and life is pointless and why do i even try you know all i ever do is do good for people and you know, now I, this is the world's way of repaying me. And it's just like, who even wants to live in this crappy world and stuff? It's like, no, none of that stuff really in a, in a meaningful way crossed my mind. You know, it, it was who there. And I was just like, there's no point to that. Like, there's no point to that kind of like, woe is me type of talk, because it just doesn't really make any sense in the long run. So St. Matrona, her parents had four children die within the first year of the of those child's birth so uno dos tres cuatro within that first year of that child's life that child died before they had saint matrona at least that's what i've been told Mm -hmm. so that's that's now my bar that's my bar for like you can complain when you know Mm -hmm. so yeah it's a good bar if I were a good host, I'd figure out something else for us to talk about. So let's go back to the questions real quick. Okay. Uh, this one is from Sun God. Uh, where should one who is 25 to 28 start their spiritual journey? Uh, would Lives of the Saints be a good start for Father? Yeah. Lives of the Saints would be a great start. Um, another good start would be just to start reading Proverbs. Uh, there's 31 proverbs and typically there's 30 to 31 days in a month. If you start reading a proverb a day or at least start, you know, even if you can't finish all of proverb one on day one, get through as much as you can, you'd be surprised how much proverbs will um, kind of cultivate the, the soil of your, of your heart, your mind. Um, so yeah, Lives of the Saints is a great place to start. Um, proverbs is great. Um, I think one other thing I would say too is um, there's a, a, a God's revelation to the human heart by Father Seraphim Rose is a great mm. a great kind of like seed to put something in there you know and that was a talk he gave to students 
mm -hmm. as well. So it's probably that the audience at the time was probably a lot of people in their 20s. Yeah, yeah. I also want to go out on a limb and say something unconventional. Um, looking at icons. Mm. Looking at icons, even if you're not reading, looking at icons will do more for you than you might even realize. So. Cyprian, I never asked you, do you have any movies that are especially spiritual to you? Um, well, we've talked about the island. Sure. Ostrov. I really like that one. Um, especially spiritual movies. I know I've got a million of them. Like this is the problem is this is this is a gift that I have is being able to find this kind of stuff in movies. And I can't mm. think of one single one right now. It's like when you're mm. going to like the store to buy, like you're like, I'm going to buy an album. So you go to like your CD store, your vinyl store, whatever and you get in there. Like, what music do I listen to? And it's like <laughs> nothing in your head. I'm like, and then you've got like yep. a couple people that yep. you know, so you go start looking at them and you're like, but I have all of this or I have all of it mm. that I want. But I, you know, uh, I know there I know there are movies that have moved that have moved me definitely. Um, but but like where I could be like, oh yeah, that's in terms of like a spiritual, let's say a spiritual map almost i think that's that's sort of what father was talking about i can't think of i know that there must have been some but i just can't think of i can't think of them and i'm sure they'll occur you know what, what movie was better than i thought it was going to be was and i this is so out of character for me is when i first became orthodox my priest gave this to me was fireproof that movie oh, yeah. oh it's by who's the guy from Mark cameron yes yes have you seen it father well, good night is it like a is it like a, it. is it uh one of these evangelical is it like an evangelical it movie? is but to say that cuts it short because okay. i i i am i'm not a cynical person by nature okay. that was like one of the first things that god more or less unless it's deep rooted in me or let's not rule it out that guy was like, let's get rid of this. I'm like, cool. Shoves it over the side. I'm like, I don't want to be cynical. I don't like cynical. In fact, it got cut. But a couple of weeks ago, we were having a conversation where I was talking about how I do not like anime. And father was like, that might be Western citizen cynicism. And I was like, all right, well, then I got to try anime again because I don't want to be cynic. Like, I don't want to be cynical. That's not something I'm really trying to do. But um, I do not like movies like that. But this movie, like, he gave me that in The Mission with Robert De Niro. That's a good movie. That is a fantastic and movie. And The Mission is. That's Have a I seen this movie? So I was, familiar. like, all excited for The Mission. I was like, it's this is going to be really fantastic. Good. And it is. With that scene where he cuts the armor. Yeah. He falls and he's like, you're forgiven. It's just like, ooh. Man. Ooh, man it's oh, I think I've seen this movie. Robert yeah. De Niro and um, I don't know. Oh gosh, I'm not gonna be able to help you on this. Oh, oh. gosh, uh, I feel like I've seen this. Oh man, the mission. I got it. De Niro. Who's the other it person? Is, uh... Oh yes, I've seen this. It is good. De Niro, Jeremy, well. Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. Yeah. 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 Yes, I've seen it. No, it's great. It's great. Best Adrian Vite I have seen yet, Father. You have yet to yeah, watch the show. But Jeremy Irons does an incredible Adrian Vite from The Watchmen. Just saying. Really? When you get around to it. Yes. Just, I'm Adrian Vite. And it's oh, oh, it's fantastic. There is a on on that same vein, similar to the mission, it actually brings it up to me. It's um uh this movie called Silence. Silence with in the Japanese conversion. The ja they're in Japan, yeah. and it's the yeah. Portuguese, the Portuguese monks, yeah. or they're not. No, are they? They're Portuguese they're Dominicans. I think they're priests, right? Yeah, they're priests. They're priests. Yeah, yeah, they're priests. Yeah, that it's got a similar feel to me as kind of as as the mission. I yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was excellent, and um, I think I was particularly struck in that movie 
with the martyrdom of the Japanese converts, like the strength, the way that their, their faith was portrayed, the strength of their faith, um, really undergoing like t the terrible tortures and everything um, was very like that, that, that one, that one was interesting to me as well. That one you know what's interesting, interesting about, about silence too, is that you, you have to kind of, well, I had to work through it a little bit because there's um, spoiler alert, turn it off, you know, whatever, <laughs> if you don't want to get, get it ruined, but you know, there's the apostasy. Mm -hmm. And it, it was really interesting because um, being able to hold that tension of like, oh man, you know, but there's something of like, the faithfulness of like the faithfulness of Christ is is presented in that in such a way it's really deep actually I felt you know like I, I don't I mean I, I see where it's problematic but like it, it's it's really it makes it about the faithfulness of Christ versus mm -hmm. like the human component mm -hmm. the, the component of the will of the individual of the priest if, if you understand what i'm saying you know yes, I, mean? I do um yes. yeah it's really it's it's interesting it's interesting but anyway about fireproof <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna say it's not like and even my priest i gotta look this up even my priest agreed the acting's not oh so i was all excited about the mission but i checked out fireproof first because my 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 baptizing priest the priest who baptized me like you should really really watch this movie and um the whole movie is about marriage it's like if you are married you should watch this movie it is so like that it goes from it's like about fire it's so it's about a fireman and his wife and they're not doing good he's looking at porn he's like not being faithful he's not or not being faithful like like he's not going out and like finding other women or anything except on the internet and stuff um, she's pretty much thinking of having an affair with another guy from her work and stuff like that. And it's about this reconciliation. And like, there's this part where he's like starting to approach the idea of coming back to God. And he's like in this house and that's on fire and he falls through the floor and he's basically like screaming at the top of his lungs, like, God, help me. Like, God, please help me. Like, and it's like, it's sincere and it's honest. And it's like, and not everything goes well. And like the dude has to change who he is and stuff like that. So I know I, there's no, way I can really sell this movie to you guys other than like, it's just really like when my wife and I, then girlfriend, now wife, we're watching it. We're like at the ends of the couch, like, just like whatever, like by the end, we were like, totally like my arm was around her. And like, it was this like total. It's interesting. I'm not saying it's perfect. It's very, very cheesy, but especially for marriage, especially since it does not shy away from being an overtly Christian movie. It's mm. like very, very good. It's very like, and I'm not that, I mean, like, what I'm year, not. What year was this? What year was this movie? I'm oh, going to look know. here. It doesn't really. It's, it's like probably 2008. 2008. I'm, okay. And it's, okay. guys, it's not good. Like, it's not like <laughs> a well acted movie. It's not like, no one's guys, writing. It's not good. I mean, no one's writing home about these guys' acting. Oh man. <laughs> message to me. And um then uh the Matrix. The Matrix is one that is like there's a whole bunch wrapped up in that movie that we don't really have to get into. Yes. That was one for me. Yes, that's like, true. Especially yeah. post 2020. Like I rewatched the Matrix and I was like, yep, all right, I can see what everyone's talking about with this one. And then just on a base level on a real base level it does not delve into christ as much um but if you're orthodox you can kind of read between the lines but there's a really excellent like one oh like a movie that should be shown in like most like 101 philosophy classes hmm. called i heart huckabees yeah i heard Huckabee, it, sure yeah it's a fantastic like mm -hmm. it's and what's good is it's not just uh uh, like a philosophical movie you know it is but it also isn't but it's really clever and really funny 
like the thing is is, is like it just keeps coming back to like like there's like the part where he goes into the body bag and they like zip it up and all these horrible memories start coming back to him and then later on like all of those memories have something to do with the plot the plot later on so those are um but and it sucks because i'm normally really good at like being able to find those kinds of movies and being like no you know this is why this is this and this is why this is that's a gift that god has like given me um is a, is my ability to like be able to like relate to that kind of stuff and it sucks because i know i'm gonna have like 10 of them tomorrow but i have none of them tonight so yeah those are like my three albums that i know i like every time i walk into a music store and i just like what what's music do i like music is there music i like so anyway it's a uh, question that's all that's all that's i could it? find yeah that's all i could find um there uh, somebody asked, and I guess I could relate entirely to this because this is my particular brand of awkwardness that this person shares with me, is um, they said that they got a blessing from a bishop and they said thank you afterwards to the blessing. And like, I think they kind of just wanted to point it out that that didn't feel right to like say like thank you to like, you know, a bishop blessing them. So, yeah. I think I answered that actually. Did you? Did you really? Oh, all right. Yeah. I'm not vigilant about the comments as I should be. Well, what did, what did you, what was, what is the appropriate response to that? Yeah. I mean, I said, just add on your grace. Oh, there <laughs> you, you know? go. <laughs> there you're good. You're yeah. Good. That's yes. Cause that there's a whole sense. other list of etiquette. I can't remember if we went into with. The oh bit. man. You know what? Stop, 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 stop. I'm going to stop. I want to clarify something too. Cause I realized it got brought up and then and even before someone brought it up to me i was like mm, there was one there's one i brought up in particular that i just want to be i want to give a little bit more nuance on okay and it's the throwing away of blessed food you know what i mean thank you oh my gosh this has been my whole week i'm just like what do i do <laughs> i knew he was i knew he was i was like oh man and poor andrew on no this my one. wife like, is i knew like, that one was going to get you with this because we don't compost and, but we're like, I guess we're about to, but then how do we get it down there every night? Because it has to be like way back in our yard. Anyway. So, so listen, here, here's the thing, right? Any of these, like I, I, I was trying to, it, I was trying to infer this. Maybe I, was, I, I thought I was trying to be explicit about it, but first of all, look, these these are not like hard fast like okay you do this you're out of the club like it's that, that that's not it right absolutely that's the first thing absolutely but but the second thing is especially the blessed food understand it this way right it's not like oh no that p that those five peas and that quarter of bread made it in the trash i'm going to hell like it's 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 not yeah. that but i would say this understand this though this should help you to not have your eyes be bigger than your stomach amen because if you're heaping a bunch of food that like you're probably not going to eat like i have a child who has that problem and i'm trying to really work with her on that not just for her own like potential like being neglecting or whatever but just like look you know the food's blessed whatever we want to really have especially food like this points me back to you know for life of the world by father alexander schmem and like this is a whole thing what this book is about like you are what you eat you know and like the food's blessed like take what you know take less than you than you think you need and if you want more get some more you know like this core this kind of relationship between taking with blessing and, and thanksgiving and, and taking in a in a moderate sense right this is kind of playing in the background of like not throwing away blessed food right because if you're getting up like a triple heaping and it's like blah, and then i'm being told gluttonous i'm stuffed and like there's all this food left over let's just throw it in the trash like it's nothing like that's not that's not an orthodox approach or or spirit towards food right so this, this isn't about like like i said just the 
you know, you have to lick your plate. It's not that, right? But it, it's, it's just an understanding of, because again, blessings aren't magic. It's not about like, you know, you're not putting some, some happy juju on it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that either, right? But when we bless something, it's we're, we're, we're acknowledging it and putting, we're now, we're acknowledging God and putting it in the proper order of things. And we, we, we bring it in as nourishment to our body. It's like, please don't anyone lose your minds over that and then start becoming, you know, don't take that and, and become sinful now in regards of you know, ruining your lives or your mental health over it. That's not, sure. that, that, that wasn't the point. So forgive me, I just, I had to throw that out. It taught me to be a lot more careful with food, that's for sure. Like Which is right great. away. That's the next day. I was like, I'm not going to throw this away. Like you should accomplish though. You yeah. Know I mean? 100%. I was more fearful. I think that's an, I think that's an important point is that the, it is about that attention that the blessing is like now, now your focus, now your attention is in a place that like it should have been all of us. It should be, of course, our attention should be on our food. Of course it like, <laughs> that's huge. I mean, if, if we were living 500 years ago, almost all of our attention would be on our food. That's right. Yeah. Our right? work, like everything. Our, and everything would be on our food. <laughs> like there would, it would be almost impossible for us to divorce our attention from food. That's right. That's right. right? Like 24 hours a day. And like, that's kind of a good, that, that it's kind of important because it's like, then it connect. think about how much else it connects you to. Right. It connects you to the land. It connects you to, the weather it connects you to your family to your friends to your community to all of the and food is always a part of those you know what i mean and so it's like the the blessing the the blessing is a blessing like for us to be able to put our attention onto this thing to where it, our attention is so divorced from it like modern western american it's not thinking about food all the time like you know, maybe not, like not in a healthy way. way, not in a healthy way. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? But it's like, yeah. We have I'm like glad a... you said that, Father. I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because it's also helpful for me. Like that's something to for, for me to really like think about and and to be aware of as well. We have like a brother in the church who's crazy about food. Like just like he just is very, very well versed in it, understands a lot about it. And he he said to me. I'm sure he said to a lot of people, but he said to me, he was like, I mean, eat locally. Just imagine not being able to eat something because it's not in season. Like I can't even wrap my head around that. Like if it's, uh, oh, let me make sure I understand which foods are in season when I, if it's like springtime, I necessarily shouldn't maybe have strawberries. Am I right on that one? Like I don't know. but with the point we get the point the yeah. point is yeah. is that like depends on where they come from i yeah. guess but that's yeah. what he's saying he's yeah. saying that like if we're in missouri it's just like well you shouldn't be having this particular produce because it's not in season it's like i have a hard time wrapping my mind around that it's just like you live in saipan you'll wrap your you'll wrap your mind around it because you have to okay like you get you get what's you get what's here like, if we tried it there are certain things that it's like they'll try to import some fruits and stuff. And it's like, if you don't literally get it on the day that it gets here, forget it. It's rotten. It's gone. Yeah. So they don't even, so it's like, yeah, you get the local, you get the local stuff. We have a 365 day growing season. So you get the local vegetables, which are really good actually, but like, that's what you get. <laughs> like, you get what's grown here. You want, you want your vegetables, you want your roughage and all of that. And maybe you'll get some things that they can like, maybe you'll get some apples because those can really travel. Right. And maybe you'll get some mandarins. You get something from Asia. Maybe we'll get some Korean strawberries every once in a while that are mad expensive or some grapes sometimes. Um, it's been, that's been quite the experience for me, man. I'll tell you that it's taught me a lot a lot and also like in many ways it's much much better mm -hmm. it's much simpler so. it's much simpler you we know? have all of these connections which have essentially been severed mm -hmm. you know and like our our way of life like even just the fact that like we don't even like 
I, this is father's thought which i'm sure he got from somewhere else but like we don't even have to like my life does not even revolve around if the sun is in the sky or not mm -hmm. like darkness is an inconvenience for me it's not like i just have to turn up be sure and turn on my headlights before i drive at night and that's pretty much it but like i at the flip of a switch literally most 99 percent of the time i can turn on my lights like um and that's something you know darkness is more of like oh it's nighttime it's pretty it's not like no i could die because it's dark i need to stay by the light and make sure this light stays lit like you know and then make sure the light goes out properly like i wanted to ask this father like we have like a little electric kettle behind our um altar like what did they do before that like was there like a fire back in the behind the altar to boil the water to warm up the water for uh mm -hmm. like i mean that that was a whole thing about like the hearth was an altar <laughs> that's where you oh. kept your gods and that's where the warmth of your that warmth of the house the warmth is where the gods were at the warmth is what kept the people alive and and it, and it even kind of built out like from there you know um being at this the core of the city this the, the the center of the village or you know that's the center of the house and the center of the village you know that's how a city was built was around that you know like the the temple and the hearth and the fire so like that's a thing mm -hmm. that's so cool that's like that's way cooler than an electric kettle i'll say that <laughs> but uh it's going to be about that time gentlemen and i'm floundering for a question so i'm going to go back to it old tried and true and forgive me for everyone who's not into this i'm sorry but i'm just going to do it i'm sorry but we were talking about a couple of weeks ago what is your guys's favorite marvel villain because i got a couple of them i i do love me some marvel villains i yeah i was i was trying to say that on the whole a couple of weeks ago i said dc had better villains I still kind of stand by that, but Marvel has its amazing villains. Like I just don't know who any of the anybody from the Wrecking Crew is. Like I just don't know who those guys are. Like how memorable are those? I don't know who Tiger Shark is. Like how memorable are these guys? But I love so many DC villains. So anyway, that's that's all I was trying to say about that. So. Marvel villains. Well, mine's. I, I think I, I've got the gimme. My mine's Magneto. Like that's the gimme. Oh, I Magneto's think. an incredible character. I mean, I don't know that there's a better villain in comic books. Like, I really don't. I mean, I'm sure that you'll have your opinions on that. But I think in terms of a well-rounded, in terms of like a full character. Absolutely. Like in terms of villains, I don't think that there's a more fully developed villain in all of, I, I don't think so. You have a villain who's a Holocaust survivor. It's crazy. How cool is that? Like, that's like... That's an honestly, and that's a very interesting way because really you would think that Xavier should be the Holocaust survivor and the narrative now, but yes. like, yeah, because that's kind of the way it'd be presented now, but like Magneto is the Holocaust survivor. He's the guy mm -hmm. that's like angry, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Father, you got one off the bat? Yeah, uh, I think Doom. Oh, Doom. Yeah. He's the best. Another great one yeah so you got your red skull because he's an absolute because captain america is ultimate not ultimate but ultimately good red skull is ultimately just bad like a lot of times you have your villains that are like oh i'm doing this to better society or they don't know what they want so i have to step in and take charge skull's not into that Skull's like no i just want power i just want to like destroy everything i want to see everything burn and die because that's just who i am um then dr doom of course and then Ultron, oh, I absolutely love Ultron. He's That's interesting. An That's an interesting character. pick. I love him. His design, his character, like I had never thought of Ultron portrayed the way they did in the MCU. I had never thought of him like that ever. Um, you always picture him way more cackling, but he would be like oh. insane like that. He would talk like whoever, I can't remember the actor's name off the top of my head. Um, and then, man, you got Galactus is incredible because Galactus is like not even a villain. He, that's what I was about to say. He's yeah. he's kind of a, a force of nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's like, he's tortured himself. Like, what is mm -hmm. like, Father, you've read Secret Wars, by mm -hmm. the way. Whew, Secret Wars, what is the very first thing he asked the Beyonder? 
Beyonder is like, I can make anything you want come true. And Galactus is like, can you take my hunger from me, please? Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't want my hunger anymore. Like, then things can go back to normal. And it's just like, oh, Galactus. But anyway, Fantastic Four had a lot of, oh, Kang. Kang the Conqueror, man, he is so cool. Anybody that says like, for I am, and then their last name or their name is going to be a villain. Is like a favorite villain of mine. Like for I am Doom is like for I am Kang. It's just like you got me right away. So anyway, sorry everyone, but that I couldn't think of anything else to talk about. So that's that. Um, so I guess we'll play it by ear. We and I know we said we're going to get back to the Creed, um, mm -hmm. and uh, we will maybe next week. If you guys want to do a Q&A, then overload us with questions and we'll we'll answer them the best that we can. Or father, <laughs> father will answer them. And then I'll probably throw in something snarky about Star Wars or comic books or something. <laughs> and then Cyprian will talk like have, have another insight and then I'll bring it back to comic books again or, Star Wars <laughs> or something. Um, but yeah, if you guys really do have some questions, please let us know. I did go back. I tried to grab everything I could. Um, I'm sure I missed some. So repost it if you if you want to or you can send them to us or whatever. So that's it. Thanks, everyone. And thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye.